welcome to our San Francisco Temple Friday night Bible study. It's Friday night, y'all. Hope you're ready now to join us with, a, with an exciting Bible study service on tonight. I say exciting because the word of God itself is exciting. When we look into the word, we find that it, it's a vibrant uh, organism, you might say, because each time you go into that word, it says something that is going to be relevant to our lives. So we want to thank you for joining us. Welcome to San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly. You are now viewing us live streaming, and we hope that you will be ready to join us in taking notes and in uh, just getting into the word of God. We at San Francisco Temple have always been a Bible study, Bible-believing, Bible-based church. So we're continuing that so that you can be a part of that and grow and learn in the word of God and in the knowledge of who he is. So this time, we're going to go to our scripture, and uh, we're going to ask you if you can stand in recognition and reverence to the holy word of God. We're going to go to Psalms 15. Psalm 15. And the word of God reads thus. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh upright, uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbateth not with his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth those th these things shall never be moved. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to study the word of God and to bring forth your word to those that are viewing and hearing us. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will open up our understanding, that you will bring forth the word in clarity and in power and authority under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And that everyone that is a part of this service, Lord, shall be edified and blessed for being with us on tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless us all. And we give honor and praise to you, to our pastor, the Honorable Bishop, Dr. Luther Blackwell. And we just pray your blessings upon the entire congregation. And we just give you the thanks in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Well, we're happy to be a part of our continuing study of the Bible. We thank God for our pastor, Bishop Blackwell, for blessing us to have the opportunity to present the word of God to those that are viewing and listening to us. So this time we're going to get right on into the word of God. We have been studying out of the gospel according to St. John, and we are now studying on chapter 16 on tonight. Our study on tonight will bring forth the, the word where we see the disciples are with Jesus. And this is really a continuation of Jesus' discourse with the disciples. He had just finished the Passion Supper with them, and Judas had received the sop and left out. And then we, it takes us into an opportunity for the disciples to be with Jesus during the, the Last Supper. Following the Last Supper, Jesus then began to talk with the disciples, this being his last discourse with them. It's just like when you get ready to graduate from college and getting ready to go out into the world for perhaps a job or your own business or what have you. And it's your first step out there. Your mentor, your teachers, and others who have guided you along the way, taught you along the way, 
and giving you all that you needed to, to be with them uh, that are, uh, or to interact with those that are of, the, of the workforce and so on. It, it makes it where you're now prepared, but you may have not, you may have not the, the, the confidence to be able to go out there. So Jesus knew that his disciples were in that situation, so he was giving them these last instructions before he would leave them. So our outline of our lesson of today it comes from all from John 16, verses 1 through 33. The breakdown of that is verse, verses 1 to 6. We have Jesus warns his disciples of troublous times after he departs. Then verses 7 to 15, we have he tells them that he would send the Holy Ghost to them. Verses 16 to 22, he tells and explains his going away and coming again. And Jesus gives authority to ask the Father in his name in verses 23 to 27. He explains that his departing is only returning to the Father in verses 28 to 32. And finally, verse 33, we see his victory over the world assures them of peace in tribulation. So let's get started in the specific and the detailed scriptures. Verses 1 through 3, or I'll just go on to 1 through 6. 1 through 6, we're going to see the troublous times that Jesus explained to his disciples. So verse beginning at verse 1, the word of God reads thus. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you, you of them. And these things I have said, or said I not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Look at these verses, what Jesus was telling them. He said, he talked about these things, he was summing up the things that he had just spoken to them, as you all who were here in our previous uh, lessons, where you heard in verses, ch uh, chapters 14 and 15, how that uh, he was giving them the beginning of this discourse and the things that were, they could look forward to. But he had the opportunity now to, to give them the good news or the bad news. He chose to give them the bad news first. And so here he told them he didn't want them to be offended by all the things that were going to come upon them. He didn't want them to be tripping and stumbling and falling because in a spiritual way, especially because uh, he knew that he had the key to their strength and the key to their victory. So he was telling them, first of all, don't be offended. And so he went on and told them this, that they were going to put you out of the synagogues. Now, today, maybe that doesn't sound like a big deal because today with so many alternatives to the uh, going to church and so many doors are obviously closed these days during the pandemic that people have gotten somewhat accustomed to not being in the sanctuary all the time. And then again, uh, they have the opportunity to... Uh, watch live streaming or uh, listen to the broadcast uh, through some other kind of means. So uh, being put out of the synagogue may seem like uh, very little to us. We sometimes when we're not settled in one church, we go church hopping and go to another one, find the right perfect church. And we find the church, the perfect church, and it's perfect till we get there. But now there's here is uh, the excommunication that they're being faced with, being put out of the synagogues. And 
for those at that time in Jesus' day, that was a big deal because the church or synagogue was the center of religious as well as a lot of social activities. So that would put them in an embarrassing and a, a very uncomfortable way if they were being put out of the synagogue. And Jesus went on and told them too that you are going to be killed. Don't worry, like they're putting me to death. You too will be experiencing the same thing. You will be martyred. All the disciples too experienced this one way or another, except Judas killed himself and then, and then John was not uh, martyred, but all the rest, 10 of them, were martyred. So we see that Jesus' prophecy prediction was coming true, but that was not intending to scare them. They were there, they were, should now be ready for things that would come uh, their way. And, um, but just think about it, those people, who, excuse me, who were uh, subject to killing them, they didn't have the knowledge of who the Father really was, nor Jesus. Uh, they really had a, a distorted view of who Jesus was in his mission. So, but the Bible lets us know that you're going to experience some troublous times. And then John 15 and 21, uh, just to support scripture says, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. They didn't know the father and they didn't know the son as well. Verses four to six, in the lesson uh, scriptures there, they, um, Jesus said that you don't, you may not remember, you may not know what I'm saying now, but you will remember all these things that I've said to you when the time comes after I'm gone. Let's go on and look at our next verses here, verses seven to fifteen. This is where Jesus was going to send the Holy Spirit. In His absence, He was going to give them something to keep them, so that they wouldn't have to worry or be anxious over uh, things that were coming their way and their ministries. Verse 7 in particular, the coming of the Holy Ghost requires Jesus to depart. The scripture reads thus, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Here Jesus was letting them know, know in certain terms, that in order for them to continue to be uh, comforted and to be strengthened, that he would have to send them the Holy Ghost because his mission itself was about to be fully accomplished. He was going to, in, in the very near future, in a few hours, say, it is finished. The work that he was sent to do was done. So he was going to be gone. So they were going to need something to be able to hold fast to their profession of faith. So he's reiterating now the comforter coming. He had already told them back in St. John 14 and 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus was sending back something that was going to be eternal for them eternally, for those that would ex receive uh, him. So Jesus, was in, his mission was just about over, and so now he was providing for his disciples. So let's look at what the comforter was going to do. The comforter now was going to be there for them. This is apart from the, the bad news. Now we're talking about all the good news in the remainder of this chapter that Jesus was given for his, given the, his disciples. Verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. I'm going to go ahead and read those. This, this was explained the roles of the, of the Holy Ghost. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. You see here in verse eight here, Jesus was going to reprove or convict or condemn. He was going to uh, uh, put uh, notice onto the world 
for their sin, for their right, their so-called righteousness and of their judgment. He said uh, for sin because, uh, I'm sorry, because they believe not on me. And we look at John 14 and 26, but the comfort of which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said of you. This shows that he was sending something for the disciples. This is what some uh, previous verses that we saw in our previous lessons point to the comforter coming. Uh, chapter 15 and 26, another previous uh, verse to our lesson. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded, proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. That's two things that the comforter would be doing, and that is to uh, teach you all things and testify of the Lord. He's also going to bring all things back to your remembrance. So now in our lesson here, verses 8 to 11, we see this threefold work of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, in the work, as work in the world. And here are those threefold things that he's doing, his role. He's going to reprove the world of sin. Mark 16 and 16 says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Why is this connected? It's because unbelief is really the foundation of sin. Unbelief is. So this is what he's going to reprove the world of. He's going to provide a way. He's going to provide something to believe in. And that is Jesus Christ that's going to bring back uh, those that are willing to the Father. He's going to reprove the world of righteousness. That's not the righteousness of God, but the righteousness of man. He said, because I go to the Father and you see me no more. Isaiah 64 and 6 says, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we do not and we do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. In other words here, the key part here, all of our righteousnesses, man's righteousnesses, the world's righteousnesses, just as filthy rags, that's how righteous the world's righteous is. And then he's going to reprove the world of judgment. Romans 20 and 12, I'm sorry, Revelations 20 and 12 says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Yes, there's judgment in the earth, but it's not righteous judgment. God is going to send righteous judgment to the people of God. And what are the other roles of the Holy Ghost? Verses 12 to 15 of our lesson say this. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus was saying here that it was just, it would be too much. It would just almost choke you with all the things that I have for you. So I'm sending the comforter. So in verse 13, he says, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. This is what Jesus is saying about the comforter. For he shall re receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall show he shall take a man and shall show it unto you. This was, will be the role of the Holy Spirit, to show the disciples, to show the saints of God what, the, what Jesus is giving him to say. He's not going to speak of himself. He's not going to glorify himself. He's going to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is why Jesus was sending the comforter, 
that Jesus would not be able to remain here. He had done his mission, so he was sending back the, his, himself through the Holy Ghost. So he would continue the work of guiding, leading, and testifying of his, himself or of the, of the Lord God. So let's look, go further in this. We're going to go on to verses, um, beginning at verse 16, going through 16 through uh, 22. And this is where Jesus is telling the fact that he's going to be going away. Jesus knew from the beginning that he was not going to be here a long time. He knew that he was going to be here a time only to be able to bring forth in his ministry, bring forth that which God had given him to do. And that was the gospel, the gospel of salvation. So I'm going to read verses 16 through 22. This is where he's explaining the fact that he's going away and then coming again. Okay, again, he had 16, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, what is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. I'm sorry, the first part was a little while you shall not see me. And again, a little while you shall see me. And because I go to the Father. So verse 18, beginning there now. They said, therefore, what is this that he said? A little while. We cannot tell. We don't know what he says. Now, Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, do you inquire among yourselves of what I said? A little while, and you shall see, not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and mourn, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now, therefore, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Jesus started off with a little while, say just a little while. Now, he was talking here about the remaining time up to the crucifixion. And then he said a little while again. Now, this time when he said a little while, you see me. At first, it was a little while and you'd see me not. So it was going to be a, a space of time. Three days he was going to be in the grave. He was going to be away from the disciples. They were going to be sorrowful. They were going to be sorrowful. But then... After three days, he was, the Lord was going to raise him up. He was going to be resurrected. And for a short space, he was going to be seen on earth, walking on earth in a resurrected body. But then comes the ultimate time that he was going to be seen. And that is, going, that is referring to the time of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. In other words, once Jesus then would rise, as we see in the book of Acts, once he rises to go to the Father, he was then going to send back another comforter that was going to be with them all the time. So then a little while, then you'll see him again. But it won't be in the person, the bodily form of Jesus Christ. It was going to be in the form of the Holy Spirit. And the works of the Holy Spirit being recorded in the book of Acts, the work of the works of the Holy Spirit were going to be so vast and so numerous and so great that it would be far in excess and or more than what Jesus as one individual walking on this earth could ever do. So that's why he said greater works than these shall you do. 
because I go into the, into the Father. So the disciples were then given, will be given, the, that which they need to be able to continue the work of Christ, that which they learned. Luke 24 and 17 says, and he said unto them, what manner of communication are these ye have one to another as ye walk? So they were sorrowful. They would be sorrowful coming up soon when he is, is, is crucified. But then again, there was, that was going to turn into joy even for the short space in which he was resurrected, raised from the dead, we see here going into the future a little bit, Luke 24 and 32 says, and they said one to another. These were two of the disciples on the road to uh, Emmaus. Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? This was where Jesus met them. They were sorrowful. They were talking down because their one hope of being uh of uh, 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 being on top, you might say, uh, because of the Messiah coming. Uh, their, their one hope had been, had been crucified, and they were all sorrowful. But then Jesus was walking next to them, and they didn't know. Their eyes were kind of closed to where they didn't recognize him. And he was asking them, what is this that you are talking about? But as soon as he, they, uh, they recognized him, or why he gave them the scriptures and while he opened up their understanding, they were saying, hmm, that, that sounds like what Jesus used to say, those things. And then he disappeared from their sight and they said, that was he. He was, he is resurrected. And they knew that was him. They said, did not our hearts burn while he spoke with us and talked with us, by the way. Jesus now Further in this discussion, his discourse with his disciples now moved on further. This is still right after the, the Last Supper when he was talking with them. Verses 23 through 27. I'm going to read those. And in that day, he's talking to his disciples now after dinner. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing of, in my name. Ask and it shall be and you shall receive that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say unto you, that I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. Here Jesus was, was referring, going back to verse 23, he was referring to in that day. That's the day of his going back to the Father. At that time, when he goes back, he was telling them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he was giving them what some people now call power of attorney. The fact of using Jesus' name in prayer, using Jesus' name in your request. But notice this, and I, I, I'm really believing that many times our prayers are not answered because we don't even pray properly. Jesus said, to ask the Father, but use his name. Ask the Father. He said, hitherto have you asked, no, asked me nothing, nothing in my name. But now I'm giving you the authority to do so. So Jesus was saying, ask the Father. Go ahead and ask the Father. But use my name. If you use my name, he'll give it to you, whatever your request is. And he said a little further on, he said, when you ask the Father in my name, I say not, I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Because we're asking the Father. And he says that the Father loveth you. So he will answer your prayer. He will give you that which you desire. So this is how Jesus is giving us to pray. 
Once before he told us to pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we pray according to the way he says. So now he's giving us to pray by using the name of Jesus. He says, whatsoever we ask the Father in his name, he said, the Father will give it to you. You have the power within you if you use the name of Jesus. He said, the Father loveth you. I'm going to go on now a little further into our lesson and get closing in on our time. He explains his departing and, and returning to the Father. It was merely just something that was part of God's overall plan. Jesus says, I know the plans that I think towards you. I know what I think to you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. So he has plans for us. And it was from the foundation of the world. So reading verses 28 to 32, it says, I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now thou speakest plainly and speakest no proverbs. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Do you really believe? You're going to be tested. Jesus said, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone. Because the Father is with me. So Jesus was calmly trying to kind of quiet down their anxiety. Letting them know that, that he's got to go. He's got to leave. But he's going to send another comforter. And he came forth from the Father. So he's going to return and go back to the Father. John 13 and 3 says... Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him, given all things unto him into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, he knew this at the beginning. Jesus had not come to just make this his, his home all the time. He was sojourning through this world, but he was going to leave, but not leave alone. He was going to leave with us, the comforter. So Jesus' disciples were quick to say, yeah, yeah, we believe. Uh, we know, but they didn't. They really didn't know what was going to befall them. They were going to be scattered. Matthew 26 and 31 says, All ye shall be offended because of, of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. So Jesus knew that they were going to desert him. But yet, he empowered them to go forth in his name and to do the works that he had given them to do. Our last verse, victory. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Revelations 12 and 11 supports that. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. We see here Jesus preparing his disciples to go forth as he prepares to depart. But he didn't leave them alone. He's left the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you who are viewing this broadcast on tonight to know that Jesus has not left you alone. You may feel alone, but if you can only believe and receive the power that Jesus has given you, he's given you the power, even though he's not walking this earth right now, but yet he's left the Holy Ghost and you can receive it. If any of you that is the father and his son ask him for an egg, would he give him a scorpion or would he give him a serpent? No. He would give him what he asked. Jesus will give you the Holy Ghost if you really ask him, if you sincerely ask him. 
we're going to pray. God has for you all that you need to be able to be victorious in this life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us to speak from your holy word. We thank you, Lord, for those that were viewing and listening to our broadcast. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that for those that have received you as a partner of their sins, that they will know that you have not left them, that you're with them, and that through receiving the Holy Ghost, they can be victorious every day, all the time, always in their lives. In the name of Jesus, let them know that when they ask you and seek the Holy Ghost, that you will fill them and they can walk in victory and they can withstand all the wiles of the devil. We give you the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus. How are you going to do it? We don't have to wait till the battle is over and we can shout hallelujah right now because it's done in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. We have enjoyed giving you this lesson on tonight. We look forward to future lessons and hope you can join us in the future. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Good night.